Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Basil Rathbone inviting you to join me beyond the green door. Today's story is about Thomas J. Henning, a young and extremely courageous anthropologist who went to live with the Chaka tribe of Western Paraguay. No anthropologist had studied this savage group before. Henning went, and on his way, passed beyond the green door. Henning had to travel for several weeks up a tributary of the Paraguay River before he reached the tribe. He was fortunate to have along an interpreter, a Chaka man, who had lived in the town long enough to pick up some Spanish. With the interpreter's aid, the anthropologist was welcomed into the tribe. Henning distributed glass beads and mirrors to the delighted savages. He was given a hut and immediately began his study of the strange and unwholesome Chaka customs. Especially gruesome was the fact that the Chaka buried their sick, buried them alive and kicking for fear of the malevolence of the sick man's ghost. Henning noted down this custom and continued with his researches. He was interrupted by the fact that his interpreter became ill one night, his face turning a ghastly yellowish green. This strange jungle disease did not appear very serious, except for the fact that the Chakas preferred to bury their sick rather than take any chances on ghosts. Luckily, the ailment had come at night, when the interpreter was alone with Henning in his hut. But still, it was an extremely precarious situation. Henning fastened the door and pumped the interpreter full of antibiotics. He stayed beside him, administering to the interpreter day and night. Red-eyed and gaunt, Henning wondered what would become of him if the tribesmen found out the truth. He was alone among ferocious savages, many miles from civilization. His life might well depend upon the interpreter. The situation prevailed for several days. Henning dozed off one morning and was awakened by wild shouts in front of his hut. The tribesmen were demanding to be allowed in. Apparently they suspected some kind of witchcraft. They enforced their demands by shooting a few poisoned arrows into the hut's thatched walls. There was no way of stopping them, so Henning unfastened the door. The Indians strode in and peered at the sleeping interpreter for a long time. At last they turned away. Henning was delighted to see that the man's skin condition, thanks to modern antibiotics, completely cleared up. But Henning had no time to enjoy his triumph, for the tribesmen seized him and dragged him outside. Henning struggled fiercely, demanding to know what was wrong. A savage held up one of the mirrors Henning had brought, and the anthropologist saw with horror that his own face had turned a distinct shade of yellowish green. Even while he was trying to explain about the wonderful healing powers of modern antibiotics, Henning could hear the steady, methodical sounds of a new grave being dug.